Awesome. Guys, it's Whitney and Rachel and Dawn, and we are a court of three, and we are here to talk about the choice is yours. Um, we have been learning over the past several months, I guess, but especially the last month or so, we've really been focusing in on um, working on ourselves and finding happiness in ourselves, but that also means choosing the happiness. Just choosing like in the bad situations or the interesting situations as we're calling them now, um, to really find that nugget or that something in there that you need to change or need to change in you so that you can grow through it instead of just going through it. So Whitney, what do you have to say about that? Um, I always like telling people it's like a thermostat and I try to tell my kids this too, right? Like I'm like, when you leave the stinking door open and it's a hundred degrees here in Texas, my house is no longer cool. <laughs> um, so I'm like, this is the same thing with you and with anybody I talk to. It's like, you want to be the thermostat controller, right? When you set the temperature, you get a control of whether you're up or down, not the outside situations, meaning not if the door's left open and that's what's causing you to lose your set point. So that's what I always think of. And so I'm always like, if I feel off or if my kids feel off or whoever, I'm like, okay, well, let's start with what are you, what are you thinking about right now? And then what are you feeling right now in this present moment? And then kind of go from there to, okay, that may have happened, but internally you can change that. Oh, that's good. Um, Rachel, you got anything to add to that set point or present moment stuff? Present moment, yes. And I have to thank Whitney for enlightening me on the present moment concept um, because I didn't realize for so long that I'd subconsciously been living in past moments um, and subconsciously meaning not choosing it, but also not realizing I had a present moment or I had the option to live in the present moment. And so just knowing that you have the choice and actually taking a minute to think about, okay, where am I at in this moment? And like, what, what is this moment like? Like, am I having fun? Is, is there stuff that's going great in this present moment? Or am I experiencing something that I should, I should be feeling bad about, or is that bad feeling just something that I'm just bringing along from who knows when in the past? And that was like, okay, I'm 40. <laughs> I have not heard about this concept until now, but it was like such uh, a freeing concept to know that I can think about the exact moment I'm in and choose the feelings of that moment or choose different feelings in that moment to change my reality. So that's really powerful. Yeah. So Rachel was telling us about a story she read and I don't think I can say the name right, but um, I'm gonna let her expound on that because I think it kind of flows into the, all of our choices that we're having to learn to make lately. Or get- Okay. I gotta find it. So talk amongst yourselves for a second. <laughs> I get to you. I will just say being in that present moment also helps kind of relieve you from any addictive feelings you have. So like if you really struggle with anxiety, that can actually be an addictive feeling um, and an addictive, addictive response. So grounding yourself in that present moment helps you realize that, oh, I'm just sitting here. There's nothing to be anxious about. So what am I thinking about? And those kinds of things to kind of break away from that. Yeah. Oh, that's good. And then just being, living in the present moment, you know, like you said, Whitney, as you do it more often, it's easier to live in the present moment so that your day is directed by what's actually going on and not what you're fearing is going to happen or what happened, you know, a day ago or an hour ago or 10 years ago. Very so, Really powerful. Okay. So yeah, this is uh, the concept of Quinonia. Um, so I'm just going to read this article really quick because it's super short. God has an amazing plan for us to never be lonely, and it's called Quinonia. It's a Greek word meaning intimate relationships, community, communion, fellowship, and sharing with one another. Quinonia was instituted by God so the Christian community would never feel alone and would always have their needs met. 
all the, all the believers were together and had everything in common. They sold property and possessions to give to anyone who had need. That's Acts chapter 2, 44 and 45. Um, and at that time, they were basically, they were all just kind of supporting each other. My money is your money. My food is your food. It was just kind of a communal living, but all for the good of everyone um, thriving. Uh, so when true quinonia is practiced, all needs are met and there is no loneliness or need. Like the three musketeers would say, all for one and one for all. Quinonia speaks of real communities where every member plays a significant role. One of my brothers searched the world for intimacy and truth. He traveled in a van and hitchhiked around Europe during the 70s. He tried Eastern religions, drugs, and whatever else he could find, but he finally found peace in a Christian commune. Yes, communes were popular in those days. I believe that deep down, we are all looking for communion or being in community. Have you found your community? And so I think, you know, our court of three is that quinonia for us. And um, being able to have this spiritual community where we can, all of our needs are being met through the gifts of each other. And whether that's our gifting of like Whitney's gifting of counseling and therapy and how that assisted me in, you know, breaking through some things, Dawn's gift of declaring and affirmations and just speaking truth in life always comes invaluable for us in this community. And so as a court of three, we are just our needs are being met by the flow of our gifts and by the flow of provision that God's blessed us individually with. And because we know that we can trust each other, like that's an important part of that community because we know that we're all based in God um, and in truth, we know that we can trust each other to come to this community for support and how much we wish and, for all, everyone out there that they would be able to find their tribe, their community, their court of three, because we would totally be in different places um, yeah. if we didn't have each other the last two and a half years. Yeah, so. right. it's very powerful. It is really powerful. Um, I know the court of three for me has been life sustaining at times not just um not just like convenient really don't know if i would have made it through everything i've been through since we came together if i didn't have two other people who will hold my arms up and will do whatever it is that i've done whether it's tell me to you know what i need to do even if it's harsh or even if it's like you know cold hard truth of course it's always done in love but we it's it's been amazing for me whitney what would you add um, I would just add having that safe place to just talk, even when you're just like going on for five minutes and you're like, sorry, <laughs> I just get a, a place to talk it out because sometimes journaling is, is helpful. Like when you write, but there's something powerful in doing an audio, like an audible type journal, um, which I totally recommend people doing on their phone with their voice memo. So you can delete it, right? You don't have to keep it, but just having that place where you guys don't necessarily have to respond. It's just somebody to listen, but then sometimes you might catch something that I don't catch. Um, and so just having those outside perspectives is super powerful, even when, you know, you might just be going about your day saying something nonchalantly and you're like, wait, that's actually, you know, I think symbolic, symbolic of this. So that's what I think is pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's awesome. Rachel, I'm glad you brought that up because I think our court of three lives, we haven't really talked about what our court of three is. I mean, we have a little bit, but now people kind of get the acts connection to what we're doing and why we think it's important. So I love that. You guys have any final words before we wrap it up for today? Um, just, a, you know, that whole acts chapter two, I think it was what it was, that whole concept of unity and all of us believers coming together for the common good and the unity of the body of Christ is definitely what God is moving us into in this era, this period of time. And um, 
it's just kind of interesting how time is coming full circle and we're getting back to that Acts what chapter you two. There? I can't hear her. Yeah. Yeah, we're all here still. Did you turn your car on, Don? Are you connecting to your car? Whitney, did you have anything else that you wanted to add? No, um, well, I mean, I think that's good. What you just said is kind of we're coming back to that time. And I think those intimate connections are very powerful right now. So like we said, if the choice is yours, make sure you're choosing, you know, not only what you're thinking and feeling, and but choose your tribe and be intentional on that. Amen. Good point. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. Can you guys hear me? Because it's kind of cutting out on my end. Yeah, yeah we can. Okay, awesome. All right, well guys, we'll wrap it up today. We really appreciate you joining us and uh, this will be put on Facebook on you know all of our pages and leave some comments and questions and if you have anything that you want to um, want us to talk about, we'd be happy to address that. Um, certainly love coming to you and uh, we just hope you choose joy and happiness over the weekend. Have a great day. Bye. Bye.